So what is a predatory lease agreement? Well, FMCSA is cracking down on predatory lease agreements. So in my last video that I did, literally a couple of weeks ago, thousands of comments and so many people have emailed me their paychecks wanting me to analyze if they are or aren't in a predatory lease agreement. So I said, you know what? Why not share these paychecks with you guys so you guys can decide for yourselves? So we're gonna be going over the information, we'll go over the data, we'll go over the mileage and routes and we'll see what these lease operators actually took home after 15 days or after one week so i got two paychecks over here one of them pays uh, the company that he's working for pays him every 15 days and then i have another lease operator over here and he gets paid every week a settlement so let's get into our first lease operator so here is the email that i received can you take a look at my settlement sheet? I watched one of your videos about predatory lease. I think that's what I'm in and the attachment of his settlements. All right, so let's analyze the data together. So on the left hand side is his earnings. So it'll give his load number and from where to where the driver drove. It appears to be that when the driver drives, uh, here is one route from Grove, Minnesota to Nothi, Minnesota, 33 miles. Uh, it gets 15 cents per mile for fuel surcharge. So from what I understand here, the driver gets paid $1.03 per mile and 42 cents fuel surcharge, I think when he's loaded. So here he drove from Minnesota. Here's our first load, Minnesota to Wisconsin. Uh, gets paid $1.03, 42 cents fuel surcharge. Total mileage is $6.65. He got paid $964. Then the driver drove from Romulus, Michigan to Lima, Ohio, I believe. And then from Lima, Ohio to Findlay, Minnesota. So yes, it says here how many miles he drove, the rate per mile and the fuel surcharge. So this is a seven day pay statement. Taxable earnings is here. $2,330 is what this driver did from March 30th until April 7th. So this is a seven or eight day pay statement. And then you see here settlement deductions is all is what, what he's being deducted for. Tractor fuel, obviously the driver pays for the fuel. We have fuel here and then we have fuel again in Wisconsin and then again, there Gary, Indiana. And then we have all of the deductions, which I love to look at. So let's have a look at what Bobtail Insurance, $141 a week. Lease payment is $562 per week. Let's see, 562 times 4.2 is $2,360. So I've seen a lot worse. This is not actually, this is not that bad. I'd love to know what truck this driver is driving, but it really doesn't make a difference over here right now. Next, federal highway use tax, $10.58. Maintenance escrow, $209. Licensing and plate fees, $40. Escrow fund, $116. Repairs, $212. So I guess there's a formula here. I don't know what the formula is, but I guess there's a certain amount of cents per mile that gets deducted for, for repairs and maintenance. Now, the one thing I hate about this paycheck is it doesn't sum up the total. I hate when paychecks are like this. It doesn't sum, sum up the total miles that the driver drove. Oh, actually, sorry, they do have the total miles. It just won't, it says grand total, and it doesn't say, it says grand total, but it doesn't say miles and make my life easier. So 1,729 miles, I feel is a little bit short. The driver could be doing a lot more miles and I wonder if it's week after week, it's the same. When you have a slow week, I mean, you should be doing about 22, 2300 miles. When you have a good week, it's about 2800, 2900 miles. So what do I think about what the driver took home? So here the driver took home $398 after the week. So Henry, after looking at your settlements and after you made $398 for the week, yes, I do feel like you are in a predatory lease. Why do I feel that way? Because if you were to drive as a company driver 1,729 miles and multiply that by 65 cents per mile, you would have taken home $1,123 dollars okay there's absolutely no reason why you should be taking home 398 dollars there's absolutely no reason why you should only be dispatched 1729 miles you need to understand one thing that you have paid for every single one of your expenses you're supposed to be in a lease agreement when you pay for these expenses you expect to get dispatched you expect to have miles and that's why you agree to these lease purchase program now i don't know what the scenario is whether you have bad credit or uh, if you didn't have enough money for a down payment but if you do have good credit and you have enough money for a down payment you should be working as an owner operator and not a lease operator okay and not into one of these lease purchase programs i feel like at the bare minimum you should be making what a company driver makes and nothing 
less. I mean, yes, your truck can run into issues and sometimes, but in this pay statement over here, I don't see any repairs. I feel like, you know, they are charging you a fair market value for the truck. I don't know what truck it is, but it looks like you're paying only $2,500 approximately for your lease agreement. The mileage, you're not being dis dispatched properly and you should never be taking home only $300 to $400. You should be making at the bare minimum what a company driver makes. So that's my analyzation for truck driver number one. Now I will not release the company names of where these drivers are working. I'm not here to bash anybody. I'm just here to educate all of you guys. What I am here to do is to educate you guys and create awareness. So this is what this channel is all about. So Henry, thank you so much for sending me your pay statements. I really appreciate it. And with your help, we are able together to create awareness for every one of our subscribers out there. So now let's get into the second pay statement. Now here is another pay statement and you have his settlement, settlement, deduction, settlement, settlement. It was very hard for me to understand this pay statement, but I put it all together in my head. So let's talk about the settlement. So this driver is obviously from the West Coast, from what I can see. He starts off in Eugene, Oregon, makes his way to Gardena, California. And then from California, again, he goes to another place in California and then runs to Washington. And then from Washington goes to California. And then from California goes to Oregon, Oregon to California. So now the total earnings for this lease operator, apparently the, the trucking company takes 12%. So it's a gross split, 12% and 88%. After the company takes the 12%, the driver's left with $8,724. And now we get to a different page where all the deductions are at. Let's go over some of the deductions that he's paying. He's paying first quarter IFTA in 2023. The driver paid $740. He switched some sort of filter. I think it's $711. Then he paid an admin fee, truck maintenance. So I guess the driver pays about 13 cents per mile on 4,281 miles where he paid $727 for the maintenance of the truck that he's driving. Then he's paying for the e-logs. Then he's paying for the fuel card, $9 for the fuel card. Then he pays mobile com access fee sorry a, a note that you need to remember is this is a 15 day pay statement it's not seven days okay mobile com access fee 45 dollars i feel like that's a little much for 15 days i mean if it's one month it would be 90 dollars. i have a feeling that's a little bit much truck trailer and cargo insurance so this driver pays for his own insurance seven hundred dollars fourteen hundred dollars a month i think that's that's a fair market value for insurance these days then 401a i don't know what this is but a 27 dollar deduction and then he has another, I don't know what this is, another $107 deduction. And then he has an EBB truck lease, uh, $1,657. Now, if this guy is leasing $1,657 and you multiply that by two, then he's paying $3,300 a month for his truck, which is not that bad until I see another CV lease over here at $700. So I see $1,657, $1,657 plus $700. Now I think that this is f***ing outrageous when the driver's paying $2,357 times two is what he's paying $4,700 for his truck. So I don't know what kind of truck this is, but it is outrageous. So it's a truck lease and then a CV lease comes out to $4,700. Yes, I think that that's abnormal. I don't think, I think that's way too much. Then he has another deduction here, NAIT insurance membership. So another insurance that he has, and then he has NMWDT first quarter, $30. And then he has a fuel and some other fees. So total deductions that this driver has is $6,029. Now, if you take $6,029 and then you add to that, to the $2,451, which, which was the deduction of the 12%, the driver's left with $2,594 here that was transferred into his account. Now, great, I like this because it says total miles driven is 4,065 miles. So this driver netted $2,594. So I have to say that between the two lease purchase programs that was forwarded to me, I kind of like this one better. Now, the email that I received, hello, can you give me some feedback on my lease? What do you think? So what do I think? I think that whatever you're paying for your truck is a little bit high. I do feel like your gross earnings at least are where they need Need to be i feel like that if you drove 5500 or 6000 miles which is probably where you need to be in 15 days your paycheck would have been a lot better so how do i know the difference between a predatory lease agreement or somebody taking advantage of somebody versus something that's half decent or normal out there what i like to do is i like to take the total miles the total miles in this case was 4065 miles 
Okay, so I put that number here on the side, 4,065 miles. Now this driver made $2,594. Now if I took 4,065 miles and I paid this driver 0.65 cents per mile, the driver should have gotten paid $2,642 as a company driver with absolutely no expenses, no headaches. Now, I feel like in California, which is where this driver is from, the pay rates are actually a little bit higher than this. Now, this driver actually made $2,594, which is probably at par with what a company driver made. Why in the world would you take all the headache of having a lease agreement on yourself if you're making the same as a company driver? I still can't understand that. You should be making, okay, if this driver drove 5,000 or 5,500 miles or 6,000 miles, I feel like the driver would have done a lot better with his pay. And that's why I won't classify this one as a predatory lease agreement. I feel like if his pay was based on 5,500 miles or 6,000 miles, there would be a bigger difference between a company driver and a lease operator. Now, I feel like lease operator operators should be making at least at the bare minimum between 50 to 25 percent more than a company driver so what this driver should have made was 2650 plus we'll add another 20 percent onto that is equal to so if this driver should have made around three thousand dollars in a lease agreement because it he needs to be compensated for the headache of having a truck for the headache of the repairs and maintenance for the headache of everything that comes with owning a truck i mean there's a lot of headache you're not going home and you're not sleeping and you are constantly thinking about that truck you're constantly thinking about the repairs and maintenance your job doesn't just end and you go home and you don't think about anything as an owner operator or a lease operator you worry a lot about your truck on how you're going to make ends meet at the end of the month so that needs to get compensated for now in this scenario over here and in my first my first scenario forget about it that is a complete disastrous deal the second one i feel like if he did a little bit more miles it would have worked out much better for him i would keep an eye out for it so that is my honest opinion and a thank you very much for Dozius for sending me the email and sending me the paycheck. There's a lot of emails with paychecks that I'm getting. Now, if you'd like for me to analyze your paychecks, you're more than welcome to send it to me at sponsorship at ettransport.ca. I would love to analyze your pays and let you know my honest opinion on what I think about it. Not just me analyzing your pays. Sometimes in uh, I'll choose some of them and I'll make a video on them. And I never disclose the information of where the company that you're working for. So you have nothing to worry about. I do use your pays as actual just like I did in this video but I try to eliminate all the data about the company that you're working for so a very special thank you to the two drivers that sent me their pay statements if you have any comments on these pay statements put them down below if you're thinking of getting into the industry if you're thinking of signing a lease agreement with somebody make sure your pay rates are competitive because there's a lot of predatory lease agreements and if the FMCSA right now is targeting predatory lease agreements that's how you know that there is a problem in our industry and we need to unite, we need to educate one another, and we need to create awareness for everybody out there in the trucking industry on what's right and what's wrong and what we will put up with and what we won't put up with. Hopefully you learned something from this video. I'm Ronan, R-O-N-E-N, and I'll catch you in my next video.